Hi. Hello again. Ray Friends, page 671, in the chapter, A Congregation of Free People in Search of Christian Freedom. The subhead is the one indispensable essential. Ray says, as to what Jewish Christians had earlier been part of and the change they faced, we read this comment. And here again, he's quoting from Marcus Dodd's commentary on Hebrews in the Expositor's Greek Testament. And Dodd says, the whole Mosaic dispensation was involved with things visible, tangible, material, evanescent, that is fleeting. It was a shadow of the good things to come, and to these real, eternal things, Christ introduces men. In him we have throughout to do, not with external ceremonies and temporal arrangements, but with what is spiritual. In him we come in touch, not with imperfect revelations of God, made through symbol and human medium, but with the very image of God. He mediates between God and man in virtue of his connection with both. He leads men into the true relation to God, by himself perfectly fulfilling the human life in obedience to God's will. He is priest in virtue, not of what is of the flesh, not by inherited office, but by virtue of his sympathy with men and his personal stainlessness, bringing men and God together by the pure and perfect surrender of himself to God. That's the end of Dodd's quote. All those visible, tangible things and the men and special acts involved with their usage had actually been only a shadow of the good things to come. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Some clung to the shadow. <coughs> Some clung to the shadow, to the things that appealed to the senses, things that they could see, hear, and feel, and this kept them from appreciating and genuinely embracing the far greater grander spiritual realities foreshadowed. They failed to realize that the common purpose of the Old Covenant and the New Covenant was to bring men into fellowship with God, and that the Old, for all its impressive material features, was not designed to accomplish this in the full, complete sense that the New alone was capable of. Contrasting the two, the Apostle writes, in 2 Corinthians 3, 9 to 11, and chapter 4, verse 18, quote, If the ministry of the old covenant that condemn, condemned had glory, greater by far is the glory of the ministry that justifies. Indeed, when you compare that limited glory with this surpassing glory, the former should be declared no glory at all. If what was destined to pass away was given in glory, greater by far is the glory that endures. We do not fix our gaze on what is seen, but on what is unseen. What is seen is transitory. What is unseen lasts forever. End of quote. Ray says it took faith to accept that, to put excelling value on the spiritual rather than on the visible, to engage in worship that was not impressive to the eye, had no special appeal to the ear, was not subject to touch, but which appealed to the heart and to understanding, a worship that had no need of special places, and special times, special for forms and functions, but that found its place in the day-long, everyday life of the person. It took faith to accept that a personal relationship with God through His Son was the one and only essential, that all other things are secondary, even, if need be, dispensable. It takes the same kind of faith to make a similar placement of values in our time. Mm -hmm. So again, I think he's putting too much emphasis on, on uh, physical versus spiritual, as if the one is replacing completely uh, the former. You know, they, they had they, ha they had something new, and that was justification, reconciliation with God. But that didn't mean that there was no need for, for any kind of, of physical, any, any uh, forms or, or structure in worship or the, in, in coming together. And they had that in their, the rest of their life, especially the Jewish Christians, for sure. Mm -hmm. But he does make a point about 
the reconciliation point that's yes. important to you. And yes, he in the footnote uh, when he was talking earlier, he has emphasizing that the basic purpose of his work was to bring men into an approved relationship with God. The Apostle Paul describes it as a ministry of reconciliation and stated, we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So yeah, so he, he does mention it, he does talk about it. Uh, I just think he, he kind of goes overboard at, at, uh, afterwards about there being, what did he say? It could be dispensable? Well, I don't think the meeting and gathering together and having leadership and was ever dispensable. And the breaking of bread and the liturgy. So the early church, mm -hmm. it, it probably had an air of spontaneity about it when it was just house church. And an intimacy, maybe, because they were meeting in homes. But there's every, every evidence that within a few generations, they had their own liturgy. They mm -hmm. had their own forms going that were not totally distinct from the Jewish, because they were still doing the Jewish thing, as far mm -hmm. as we can tell. Yeah. I think having Marcus Dodds here is a good counterbalance to raise what seems extreme position, i.e. we need simplicity, mm -hmm. and the, the ritual was just a pre preparation for, for mm -hmm. the New Covenant. What, well, Marcus Dodds would agree with that, but he was a good Presbyterian. And if you've ever been to yeah. a Presbyterian church, as we have, mm -hmm. Presbyterian's churches are quite simple. Mm -hmm. So if you're driving through the American countryside, you're going to see all these white, these pretty white buildings, usually fairly small. Mm -hmm. Many of them are Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you go to Europe, you'll see large churches in the inner core of cities, even in North America, large Presbyterian churches. So I think they strike the balance, which is mm -hmm. simplicity, yes, but not extreme, i.e. some mm -hmm. of them will have stained glass windows and some will have a cross, a lot of them will have a cross on the roof. Mm -hmm. But inside, well, it's fairly comfortable even for a former Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, and all the church put an emphasis on hearing the word together. Yeah, I would say that's true of all the different churches. And another thing about Presbyterian simplicity, not as extreme as the Baptists, mind you, and the Brethren, but they're very big on local autonomy, so that all of the churches have a measure of local freedom. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they're connected by synods and other connection seminaries. Education, yeah. So that there is a built-in accountability mm -hmm. to counterbalance the stress on simplicity compared to the older churches. Mm -hmm. So we are going to link to a video that we did called the JW's or Jehovah's Witnesses was Apostle Paul apostate. Did James and Paul compromise the gospel? Okay. And next time, the body of Christ, a religious organization or a family-like community? Mm -hmm.